Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and in today's video, I'm going to be showing all of you how to create a web quest to help students to introduce them and reinforce research techniques and to identify key details from a text. So something that I really love about web quests is that they can be modified to be used with any grade level because you're, you're the one who chooses the questions that need to be asked, what the topic is, you can choose the amount of text. So whatever the question is, the link that you provide for students to go to to research and find the answer to the question that you're giving, um, you choose that website. So whether or not it's a website, if you choose to modify the text and put it into a Google Doc and then they have to search for it that way um, to eliminate maybe any kind of ads that might pop up on websites, um, you choose it. So if you have um, students that you know you don't feel can handle as many questions as others you can modify that so you can make several versions of the same the same project the same web quest and you can give them to your students and assign them that way uh, in addition if you have students that prefer or would benefit from uh, audio instructions it's so super simple to add uh, an audio file with your instructions and I do have a YouTube video that explains how to do that for Vocaroo um, feel free to check that out. But these web quests really lend themselves to so many different subject areas and grade levels. So I really hope that you enjoy the one that I'm going to show you here, which is a author study for Laura Numeroff. She's the author of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. She's got tons of really great children's books. So because I, I have a almost seven year old and I, I really love the books and we love to read them together. This is what I chose to do as an example. So you see here, I have her on the front, okay? If I go down to my next slide, you'll see mouse here, okay? And then there's a, a notepad. So basically the question would be how many times was her book rejected by publishers? And then click on the mouse to find, um, to record your response below. Okay, so if I click on the mouse here, okay, it's gonna tell me to go to a website. And then students will be able to read here, okay, that after nine rejections that her book was finally published. Okay, so it brings me right to the web to the web page where I'm going to be able to find the information. And I know that for this grade level, this little bit of text is is age appropriate. Okay, it's not it's not overwhelming. There's not a bunch of ads that are popping up that I would be afraid that would be inappropriate because it's right on her website. Okay, and then once they exit out. They could go back and they could type in down here and record that it was nine rejections. Okay. Okay, perfect. And then I did that for a bunch of different slides. You know, what's also great is that you can include uh, video, okay, by going to insert video. Okay, and then YouTube pops up and I just typed in uh, if. You give a mouse a cookie. And then you'll see that the options will pop up. And then I could just double click to insert the video into the slide, which is exactly what I did. Okay. Um, and then I did some extension activities where I said to, I, I created a classroom library of all her books. And I said to listen to a book each day of the week. And, you know, afterwards, you're going to let me know what your favorite is. So I have my classroom library here. Uh, the same way I went to the YouTube videos, I copied the links, and then when I click on the book, you can either hit Control K or Command K if you're on a Mac, or you can go up to Insert and hit Link. Okay, and when this box pops up, I just copied the link to the YouTube video right there. Okay, so instead of putting a video in, like I did in the other example on the other slide, here I just chose to link the videos. Okay. Um, if you are worried about ads popping up again, I do have a YouTube tutorial on how to create safe YouTube links for students where you can take the links from the YouTube videos and they will show up on a page by themselves with no other ads, no other suggested videos, a little safer for the younger grades. So again, make sure you check out that video if you're interested. And then finally, they have to tell what their favorite book is, and then they would have to come up with uh, a title of a Laura Numeroff book if they had to write one. So my example is if you give an elephant a peanut, and then on the next page here, they would write their book title, and then they can, you know, Google search an illustration that would be appropriate. 
they want to draw and then upload a, a photo if they have help from parents, then that's an option too. And it's great because like I said, you can really differentiate and you can allow students to do as much or as little with whatever resources that they have at home. Now, a lot of people um, would ask, you know, oh, what happens? You know, these are all clickable. Um, they're able to delete them. Okay, so see if the student accidentally hits backspace there, mouse is gone, and then so is your link. So in order to prevent that from happening, I'm going to show all of you how to input these images and pieces for the WebQuest into your master slides. Anything that you create in the master slides and then you share with students is not able to be edited. So they can't accidentally delete anything more than a text box. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go to a um, brand new presentation that I have, okay? And then I wanted that wood table background that I had in the other slide. So I found something here, it's just an example. Okay, so I'm just gonna save that to my computer. Okay. The title of the image really doesn't matter what I'm saving it as. And I'm just going to go to slide. Okay, up at the top, and I'm gonna to go to edit master. Okay, and in my first layout slide here, I'm, gonna, I'm going to work in the slide no different than I would another slide. So here, once it's open, I'm going to go to insert image, and I'm gonna upload from my computer because that's where I saved the wooden tabletop to. There we go, that's perfect. I could also have set that as the background if I had wanted to. Okay, perfect, there we go. Okay, from here, I'm going to go back and I'm gonna copy our mouse. Okay, there he is. Perfect. Okay, and then I can go back. And normally I would just go and I would just search these images on Google, but because I already have this project finished, I'm just gonna copy from my slides because it just makes it easier for me. If you are having trouble finding slides that um, do not have that white background and you can't find the transparent slides, uh, the transparent images that you need, you can always use um, a great website. It's called Remove BG, okay? This is what it looks like, so remove.bg. And literally, it's really great because if I wanted an image of a crayon, I can just show all of you, I wanted a green crayon. Okay, I like this one. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit copy and I know that there's a white image around the back of that, the white square. I'm gonna go to remove BG and I don't even have to download the image to my computer first. I can just hit control V or command V on a Mac. Okay, and it's gonna take the background right out of there. And again, if you want to download it to your computer to save it for future use, that's fine. You do not have to. You can always just right click and hit copy image and then go to your slide and control V or um, right click and then paste. Okay, and there's my background list image. Okay, with my green crayon. Okay, and now to put that box in that I want for the students to be able to write in, you're just gonna come up here to the insert placeholder, it's the text box icon on your menu and hit the drop down menu. And from there, you're just gonna put in body text placeholder, okay? And then you're gonna see like a bunch of stuff pop up here. Don't worry, it shows this here just to show you that it's a body text placeholder. When you exit out of the master slide, you're not going to see that, so. Um, I'll show you that afterwards. Okay, and then I want a box up here. Again, so I'm just going to insert a text box. Okay, and then I can write how many times was her book rejected. Okay, and I don't know if that's the exact wording that I put on the other one, um, but because I'm putting it here, Okay, when I leave my master slide, this will not be editable. So the students will not be able to um, do anything to that, that wording on there. They won't be able to accidentally delete it. So now once I exit out of my master slide, you're gonna see here that it says click to add text. 
Okay, so the students will be able to add that in there. The worst they can do is just delete the text box in which, you know, if they have somebody at home that's helping them, they can always just add another text box in. But this is not able, none of this is able to be deleted. Okay, but your link, your link should be fine. Okay, and then they won't be able to delete that. Okay, so now watch if I if I go up into the hit the present button. Okay, and then I go up to mouse and I just click on him. You'll see it's going to bring it right to the same web page as we were before, where uh, the students will be able to find the answer to the question. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of present mode, and I could do the same thing for all of the other slides like I did in my example. Okay, and I will make that example available to all of you. The only thing is that it's um, it's just done in slides. So if you want it to be student proof, you're just going to have to go ahead and insert things into the master slide to make sure that they're not able to um, mess with anything and delete too much. Okay, I really hope that you love this idea. I can't wait to hear uh, what other topics you're going to create web quests for and how you plan to implement this into either in class or virtual learning with your students. Feel free to comment below if you have questions. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that red button and don't forget to hit the bell because you want to make sure that you get notifications when I upload new videos, new content. All right, guys, I hope you're doing well. Take care.